senior faculty members, friends, good morning to all of you. Gratitude to Baiju for this opportunity. Curative operation for cancer entails complete excision of the tumor and inclusion of its lymphatic bed. This surgical doctrine with regard to cancer surgery was first proposed way back in the 19th century by William Halsted. It is almost a hundred years later that R.J. Heal from Basingstoke <coughs> demonstrated that this doctrine holds equally good with regard to surgery for rectal cancer. By following the embryological plane and the intact removal of the mesorectum, he was able to show that you can reduce the local recurrence rate from as high as 30 percent to about 3.7 percent with this uh, mode of surgery, and this has been a game changer in the management of rectal cancer. The basis of uh, uh, TME surgery is, is understood based on the, uh, the anatomy of the pelvic fascia. I'll just uh, give a schematic representation of uh, the anatomy. The fascia propria is that which covers the rectum and the mesorectum. That is the visceral endopelvic fascia. And the parietal fascia is the one which covers the side walls of the pelvis. That is the parietal endopelvic fascia. Which has got actually, uh, which covers the uh, autonomic nerves and the uh, presacral plexus behind it. It has got three condensations the lateral ligament, the valdez fascia, and the denandez fascia, which you have to sharply divide when you mobilize the uh, mesorectum intact from others. And the all important holy plane, which he described, is the plane between the mesorectum, uh, sorry, mesorectal fascia or uh, fascia property and the parietal fascia, which is a relatively a vascular plane. Now, to an August audience like this, it is super close to describe, to say about the arteries and lymphatic drainage of the rectum. But uh, one thing that I would like to say is that the lymphatic drainage through the rectum above the area of the dentate line is always upwards. And uh, except for uh, about uh, four to seven percent of patients who have uh, once, more than one centimeter uh, uh, intermural spread, uh, there is no much so. This forms the basis of sphincter saving resections for the rectum. Now, the mesorectum as an envelope goes down almost up to the pelvic floor, so you may not have to uh, resect the entire mesorectum for upper rectal tumors, for mid and lower rectal tumors, rotor mesorectal excision, and otherwise a 5 centimeter margin, but it's always important to have an adequate CRM or a circumferential resection margin of more than 2 centimeters to avoid local recurrence. Now, this same concept of uh, the embryological dissection has been extrapolated onto colonic surgery by uh, the German surgeon Hohenberger, who in his uh, landmark publication 2008 put forth uh, two important principles. Uh, one, a sharp dissection of the visceral plane that is separating the visceral and the retroperitoneal uh, fascia, and second, ligating the vessels uh, at the origin so that you get a maximal harvest of lymph nodes and the entire lymphatic tissue is removed as such. And by this, he was able to show that you can reduce the local recurrence rate from 6.5% to 3.6% and a 5-year survival from 82 to 89%. <coughs> the quality of surgery is definitely important with regard to like any surgery, but for colonic surgery, it should be in the mesorectic plane so that you get an intact uh, mesorectum uh, along with the tumor and the, uh, the, uh, the uh, so, source of uh, the origin of the um, vessels at their origin so that the lymph nodes, the artery vein and the forms an intact envelope and is removed as a unit. <coughs> a little bit of anatomy about the uh, retrocolic facial system. You have the toll fascia which is actually a fusion fascia which is formed by the visceral fascia covering the right colon and its mesentery when it fuses with the parietal fascia of the retroperitoneum. And higher up, when you have the pancreas and the duodenum, you have uh, this addition plane forms a threaded fascia ventrally and the trite fascia behind the pancreas and duodenum, retroperitoneum. Now it is important for the surgeon to realize this, that just like the whole heels holy plane, you have a toll space here which is actually a relatively avascular space in the total spatia and when it comes to the upper abdomen, it extends onto the threaded spatia. <coughs> Regarding the arterial supply of the right colon, mainly supplied by two vessels, the most consistent is the idiocolic artery and the middle colic artery which is found in around 90% uh, or 25% may be absent. Right colic artery by, uh, actually is present in only around 10% of patients and uh, surgeons should realize that most of these arteries cross over the superior mesenteric vein. So we have to ligate these arteries at the root uh, 
and if they are crossing post in few percent patients, it may be difficult for the surgeon to do it. <coughs> With regard to the venous drainage, it is by three vessels, the ileocardic and the middle cardiac, which drains from the superior mesenteric vein, and the superior right cardiac vein, which drains through the gastrocardiac trunk into the superior mesenteric vein. And again, like the right cardiac artery, right cardiac vein as such is present only in around 10% of patients. It's important to re recognize the gastrocardiac trunk of Enli, which is an important venous drainage, especially when you are doing a right hemicolectomies. This drains from the stomach, the right gastroenteritis vein, from the pancreas, anterior superior pancreatic vein, and from the colon, the superior right colic vein. All these three, in different ways, join together to form the gastrocardiac trunk of Enli, which is only around one centimeter in length, and joins the upper part of the uh, <coughs> superior mesenteric vein. Surgeons should also be aware of this concept of the Gillard's concept of the surgical trunk. Uh, the French surgeon Gillard, way back in 1964, described this uh, trunk as the lymphadipose tissue located around the superior mesenteric vein between the gastrocardiac trunk and the ileocardiac vein. Now, with the concept of extended lymphatic to be coming up, this is assuming importance so that only when you clear the lymph nodes at the root here, you get a complete uh, D3 lymphadenectomy. But, uh, when you go to clear the superior mesenteric artery this bare, autonomic nerves can be affected and can produce severe diarrhea. But some studies of late have shown that uh, clearing the lymph nodes to the right lateral and anterior sides of the superior mesenteric vein can do an equally good job of uh, doing an adequate lymphadenectomy. Now, just two slides regarding this uh, complex picture. When you all always come up, uh, most of you may be aware, but for the sake of juniors, the lymph nodal state node numbers and grouping uh, as per the Japanese classification. Now, any tumor uh, of the colon from 10 centimeters proximally and distally, the first line of lymphatic uh, metastasis will be to the pericardic nodes, which is usually around the marginal vessels. And the second line will be to the feeding vessels, that is intermediate nodes, and the third will be to the main lymph nodes, that is usually the superior mesenteric or the inferior mesenteric artery. So the numbering goes like this. All colorectal lymph nodes are, you have the three numbers. The first number is two for all colorectal nodes. The middle number stands for the feeding vessel. So it's zero for the ideocardic artery, one for the right cardiac artery, two for the middle cardiac, three for right left cardiac, four for sigmoid, and five for the superior rectal and middle rectal arteries. And the third digit will be the pericardic lymph node. So it's one for all the pericardic nodes. With regard to the intermediate nodes, uh, again, uh, the, the, only the third digit changes. The vessels and the other things remain the same. So it is 202, two, two stands for the intermediate nodes. And finally, the main lymph nodes, that is at the root, that, there the third digit becomes three. So this is the numbering that you have and the, how you uh, decode the number anatomically. And of course, you have the distant lymph nodes where the superior mesenteric artery and thyroidic nodes are 214 and 216. And also, you've got deep pelvic nodes also in this. So when you do a D2 lymphadenectomy for a right hemicolectomy, these are the nodes. The one in the blue box is the one you do the D2 lymphadenectomy. And the one in the red box will be the D3 lymphadenectomy for a right colon. And when it comes to the left colon, the blue box shows the D2 and the red box the D3 lymphadenectomy for a left colon. So to sum up, <coughs> surgeries like PME and CME have made a paradigm shift in standardizing surgical treatment of colorectal cancer, highlighting oncological principles like sharp dissection through embryological planes and high centralization of vessels, thereby achieving an on-block removal of the affected bubble with its intact lymphovascular drainage. A comprehensive understanding of the anatomy of colon and rectum is crucial for safety, safely and successfully performing these operations in an oncologically sound manner. Thank you.